Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokeaim here with another Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Wi-Fi battle. This time I am using Green's team from Pokemon Let's Go. So her team consists of Clefable, Mega Blastoise, Gengar, Ninetales, Victory Bell, and Kangaskhan. Now, it's gonna be a little bit tough. Uh, for one, I can't use Mega Kangaskhan, I gotta use regular Kangaskhan. Uh, and this team isn't the best, but I mean, I like the typings and whatnot. I like, I like what she has. So if you guys missed any of my previous Wi-Fi battles, there is a playlist down below. I also recently did uh, a blue one, and I also use Red's team as well. So if you guys want to check that out, there is a playlist. Feel free to leave suggestions of other things you guys like to see and um, other Pokemon you want to see me use. And check out the guy team building. So yeah, I'll be right back with the online battle. All right, we got a game. This is going to be super hard. Uh, no electric immunity. And this type of build, man, versus a Kangaskhan Melmetal. Oh, man. Um, so, Rocker is Aerodactyl, so they may just lead off with that. I'm going to lead off with Blastoise because it counter leads that. Uh, my Clefable, hopefully Fire Blast is able to do a good chunk to Melmetal. The Kangaskhan is going to be a problem, but ideally my Gengar's Will-O-Wisp helps me deal with that too. Though, obviously, Facade is also problematic. This is going to be a tough game. This is going to be a really, really, really tough game just because my team is just very, very outclassed. They have very standard Pokemon and they're very good. They're standard for a reason, you know? So we'll see how this ends up going. But I do think Blastoise can pull its weight in this game. And especially if they end up leading off with Aerodactyl. I'm just going to Mega Evolve and Scald, obviously. So lead off with the Aerodactyl, nice. They're probably just going to Rocks and, and Sack this thing and then bring out Zapdos and start clicking Thunderbolt versus my team. Um, but yeah, this is quiet natured scald from a mega blastoise, so it's very, very powerful. Uh, it may just knock out the it may just knock out the aerodactyl. They could potentially, I suppose. I guess they could potentially go out into Zapdos here as opposed to clicking rocks, but when you have Mega Kangaskhan plus Aerodactyl, typically Aerodactyl is just your throwaway lead where you set up stealth rock and then go out later into Kangaskhan and do some work. So Uh, best case scenario for me, I just get this roll right here and I knock him out. Or I get a burn with it too. Nice. Alright, so we get rid of the giant threat. We get rid of the giant threat. Mm, they can definitely bring out Zapdos now and just Thunderbolt me. How do I want to respond to that? So as far as speed tier goes, when I look at their team... My uh, my Ninetales is the fastest Pokemon, just speed ties with both Mega Kangaskhan and Zapdos. So I think that might be my key to victory. I, I kind of feel like Victory Bell, speaking of victory, Victory Bell doesn't do much in this game. So I'm going to use it as a, a sack here. Uh, if they're not running Drill Peck on their, uh, if they're not running Drill Peck on their, their Zapdos, I may be able to take a hit too. But they have no reason to not Thunderbolt, so. Yep, yeah. nice. Good damage. I'm just going to Swords Dance. Again, if they're not running Drill Peck, they're probably going to go out to Melmetal. Uh, they're probably going to U-turn out to Melmetal. And Swords Dance allows my Sucker Punch to do at least decent damage. Uh, and by decent, I mean like four. But it's still stronger than, uh, than all my other attacks. So I think SD is just my play. Is Danish the Melmetal? Yep. Very nice Melmetal too. Very, love the shininess. So I believe Power Whip actually does more than uh, Sucker Punch, thinking about it. So I'm gonna go for that Power Whip now. While it's not guaranteed damage, if it does connect, I get a lot of the turn. Nice. Yeah, this is really crucial for Clefable. Yeah, that's that's that would have done more than Sucker. I'm pretty sure even with uh, resistances and whatnot, that still does more than Sucker Punch. That's very good for Gengar. Um, also Clef potentially. I think that Blastoise is still a fair play here too because I just get to click Scald on something coming in. Uh, obviously, Burning Kangaskhan is good and bad. Good because it means Gengar walls it to an extent, or it can take a hit bad because facade is boosted but i think scald is always my best play it should be able to two a ko they may go out into muck here if they go zapdos scald into ice beam might be able to knock them out 
And that's a very, very good trade. Uh, getting rid of Zapdos. I don't know if they'll keep Melmetal alive because it does deal with Kangaskhan and Clefable. So they do end up going out to Zapdos. Like I said, uh, I'll live a Thunderbolt and if Scald into Ice Beam does KO the Zapdos, it's a good trade. Yeah, it definitely KOs too, just based on that. They might roost here, but honestly, Thunderbolt's just so good versus my team. I didn't think they would lose an opportunity to click it. So um, I do love the hit, as I knew I would. And uh, Ice Beam is going to be able to KO the Zapdos. So we get rid of one of the bigger threats to my team. Now they have Kangaskhan. Now, obviously, Kangaskhan is a problem. Um, they obviously still have Muk, Melmetal, that Kangaskhan, and I don't remember their last, but I'll look at it in a second. But things are going all right. They bring out that Kangaskhan as they should. Snorlax. Ah, oh, man, that's going to be a problem to break through. Ooh, my own Kangaskhan has to do some work here. All right, so they're going to Mega Evolve. I'm just going to Scald just in case they have, like, Substitute or something. I don't want them to get behind it. I really don't want them to get behind a sub. Now, if you guys didn't know, my uh, my Gengar is actually running Sucker Punch. Uh, but the only reason I put Sucker Punch on this build is because super, super, super weak. Like it, We're extremely, extremely weak to... Um, To, to Alakazam with this build. So Sucker Punch helps me check it out like half, which Kangaskhan and Blastoise can bring it to. See, so yeah, I think the play is just to go out into my uh, my Gengar and click. Honestly, just clicks uh, Will-O-Wisp and pray I land because I'll live an Earthquake after. I'll avoid a Sucker Punch. Best case scenario for me, they go for Sucker Punch here. Yeah, nice. That's amazing. Land. All right, that's amazing because it guarantees that I get off a hit next. Basically, if they went for Earthquake first, Earthquake into Sucker Punch Burnt would be able to knock me out. Um, but this guarantees that I get off a Sludge Bomb, which is very crucial for, for Nine Tails. Like, just getting this damage off is very crucial. See, so yeah, we're going to go for Sludge Bomb, probably do around 30-40%. They might go Alolan Muck. That does not look to be a 2 KO. Oh, and I get a crit too. So really, really, really good turn for me. Very good turn for me because now I 2 KO them and I don't think they 2 KO me, which means I also get a will o -Wisp off versus something. Mm. I'm surprised they didn't sucker punch there. Maybe they anticipated me to switch and went for facade or they could have went for earthquake. They should have went for earthquake first, honestly. I think earthquake was always their better play. Uh, Kangaskhan was never threatened from full. I was gonna will o -Wisp if I had it. End up bringing out their Snorlax. Okay. If I will o -Wisp here, their... If I will o -Wisp, then their facade is super strong. I'm gonna Sludge Bomb instead. Uh, Sludge Bomb does have that 30% chance to poison, but I actually rather poison them than burn them just because it does more. Obviously, I up their facade by doing this. Yeah. I'm okay with that though, especially because again, poison does uh poison racks up, right? And I think my nine tails my nine tails just may, it just may be able to win. So I'm gonna bring out Clefable because Clefable can Moonblast here. And if they actually go out to Melmetal, I believe Moonblast into Fire Blast nukes it. I'm not as worried about Melmetal because I have nine tails. I think I need to use them both to win. And I need to do damage to this uh to the Snorlax. So they're going to Moonblast here. They stay in. They're going to Facade me. They go for Yawn. Huh. Do they have Rest on this... Uh, on this Snorlax? Yawn, Earthquake, Rest, by Sam? I mean, I, I click Moonblast either way. Even if they go out into their... Okay, they switch. So I should have Fire Blasted there. Yeah, as they go Melmetal. But I can still win the game. Like I said, my Kangaskhan is looking really good. And my Ninetales is looking fantastic. All it has to do is land a Fire Blast on the Melmetal and I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. I keep getting crits, man. Which I do not want to get on my opponent. So, right here too, they may go for Earthquake considering Ninetales is my best switching. I'm not going to switch. I'm going to sack my Clefable to bring in my Ninetales safely. But if they do go for Earthquake, I have a chance to get a first turn Wake. 
Uh, they don't, so they go for double iron bash. But basically, had they went for Earthquake, I would have had a chance to get a first turn wake there, and then Fire Blast would have nuked them. But now we can bring out my Nine Tails. I have to land a Fire Blast to knock them out. This is getting a lot closer than I thought it'd be. I thought we'd just lose. Oh, I have Fire Flamethrower. Awesome. I don't even have to land Fire Blast. <laughs> Good. Good prep. <laughs> Good prep. The flamethrower here. And then I think Kangaskhan wins at the end. They could go out to Muck. They could go Muck. But if I burn Muck, don't I beat it? I think. So they might actually save Melmetal and not go uh, Muck. They might try and beat me with Muck at the end game too. Uh, either way, I think Flamethrower does knock out Melmetal. Even though Ninetales does not have the best special attack. End up going out into their Snorlax. That'll be two a KO'd because of the poison. Nice. Or just goes down to poison, rather. That works, too. And I think because Muck is more than likely to come out now, uh, they obviously wouldn't go right back out to Melmetal. That's the reason why they switched it out. I believe I will wisp and then go Kangaskhan. I want to say that's the play. But if will wisp lands, that's not the play. So I miss it. That's not the play. Hmm. Actually, yes, I have to will this then go Kangaskhan. Because Kangaskhan might not be strong enough uh, in this game because it's not Mega. Yeah, we land. Awesome. So we weaken the uh, the Muck. And this means that I can then go Kangaskhan after and just click Earthquake. As they foul play me. Which is going to do nothing because of the burn. Nice. Now they may attempt to... They could. I guess they could double too. They actually might win if they double. Let's see if they double. But I kind of doubt it because I could flamethrower them, right? They, they might double though. They might. But I go Kangaskhan and I go for Earthquake here. I live a foul play. Um, if they toxic me, that's, I mean, not the best because, I, yes, it does boost my facade, but I'm always clicking Earthquake, especially when they have Melmetal. Let's see if they doubled. They didn't. They went for Toxic, which was their play. Uh, and now I click Earthquake. I click Earthquake twice. Uh, ideally, Adamant Earthquake is enough to 2 it KO Melmetal. I want to say it might be. Uh, I'm not 100% on that because Muck can still beat me. Muck can still beat me. Yeah, we just Earthquake here. They probably should try and switch to Melmetal. No, they don't. Okay, well, I think I win either way now because they didn't. Yeah, I think I win either way now. Because they're burnt and they didn't. Uh, Mega Drain is not enough recovery for them. Maybe without rocks, it might be. That poison racking up, though. Oh, this is going to be a close. This is going to be a really close endgame, but I'm pretty sure I live every hit from Muck with Ninetales because they're burnt, and I just flamethrower twice. So even if they, they go Melmetal now, for instance, and Melmetal is not 2 a KO'd, I think I should win. And they don't go Melmetal, so I, I should win the game with Ninetales, guaranteed. Yep, I should win that game with Ninetales, guaranteed. So we were able to pick up the first win. We were able to pick up the first win with this team in a really close game. Very, very, very close game. I'm happy about that. Obviously, I got pretty lucky with a few crits. Um, I guess, actually, the crit on Melmetal did matter uh, with Moonblast because it meant that they couldn't switch it on this. So that, that could have, you know, played a toll in this game, of course. I wonder if this Earthquake actually is a 2-a-k. It should be because I'm adamant. Yeah, that's 2 a KO for sure. Double Iron Bash is going to knock me out. Also, Earthquake. They knock out Kangaskhan here. And then I bring out Ninetales, which survives the Stealth Rock, goes for Flamethrower, and picks off the Melmetal. Not bad. Yo, Mega Blastoise 2 helped me so much, man. Getting rid of Zapdos was so big. But I did get a lot of crits in this game. I can't deny that. Gengar, crit, Clefable crit. I feel like Ninetales, did Ninetales crit? No, I don't think Ninetales crit. Click that flamethrower and get that win. Touch that berry is not really is not in this game. There ain't no held items. So Nine Tails is able Nine Tails actually doing more here than it did in its spotlight. <laughs> but nice. Alright, guys. So I will uh pause it until we find another battle. And uh yeah, I will be right back. Alright, guys, so we have another game, and I'm gonna be real. This mega pincer looks devastating. It looks absolutely devastating. 
Um, very, very, very scary to play. Very, very scary matchup for sure. Uh, the victory bell can be a little bit annoying too. I do know that my Blastoise offensively is very good in this game. And I do think that Clefable is going to be key in helping me not lose to that Dragonite. Uh, but yeah, Gengar is going to have to land a Will-O-Wisp on the Mega Pinsir for me not to lose to it. Uh, or they could just not Mega Evolve with their Pinsir and they choose to Mega Evolve Blastoise, which I'd be okay with too. I'm leading Blastoise because it matches up well versus Rhydon, matches up well versus Dragonite, matches up decently versus opposing Blastoise, and matches up decently versus Pinsir, uh, threatening them with both with Scald Burns. So that's why I thought that Blastoise would be pretty useful here. That, I keep seeing Shiny Melmetal. Looks awesome. It legitimately looks really awesome. All right, Willie, have fun. Let's see how this uh, how this game ends up going. This one's gonna be a tough one too. Mega Pinsir is very good versus my build. My Rocker is slow, and my Rocker is also pressed for damage because of Dragonite being a problem. They do end up leading off a of Victory Bell. That was something I kind of expected, but I couldn't lead Nine Tails because they could lead Right On versus me. Um, Sleep Powder could be annoying. I'm going to make the Victory Bell play because I avoid Sleep Powder by going Victory Bell. And if there's Swords and Sleep Powder, Sucker Punch, and Power Whip, I take it. Yeah. So, Victory Bell makes the most sense. I avoid a Sleep Powder if they go for it. Nice, they do go for Power Whip. Okay. So, they could have Poison Jab. They could be just SD, three attacks. Uh... They don't switch in very well to Poison Jab, so I'm going to click it. I'm going to click Poison Jab right now. Like, obviously, Victory Bell can tank it. I'm Jolly, though. I'm Jolly. I'm not adamant. That might be the difference in damage here, too. With Poison Jab versus Poison Jab. But nothing really wants to take the hit. So I win the first potential speed tie. That is so much damage. As they go for their own Poison Jab. All right. Oof. I think Sucker Punch does knock me out. Should I make some mid ground plays and go for Swords Dance, predicting them to Sucker Punch? And then. And then Sucker Punch myself. I'm gonna try that. Ah, uh, they didn't go for Sucker Punch. So, what I tried to do there was predict them to go for Sucker Punch. Uh, Swords Dance would let me avoid it, and then my Sucker Punch is probably faster because it looks like they're adamant. Like, just based on damage, it looks like they're adamant. But they end up just going for the all out attack. I don't mind because the damage on Victory Bell is crucial. Um, I don't switch in very well to it. They might not even have Sucker. Ah, uh, that's fine. I'll make the safe play and go Nine Tails. I didn't want to make this play because it allows them to get in right on and get up rocks, but I can potentially burn it. So quick flame throw here. Like my uh, my Blastoise is a quiet nature, so I don't outspeed them. Unfortunately, I'm the wrong, I'm not the wrong nature, but I'm the the nature that I think fits best with earthquake and stuff. They end up bringing out right on as expected. Not like I could switch into them, but weakening this is really nice for uh, for Kangaskhan anyway. Um, so I get some nice damage off on the right on. I'm gonna bring out my Blastoise here, Mega Evolve, and just click Ice Beam. They're probably going to go for rocks. Earthquake is also relatively free versus my team, considering I do not have a ground resistance. Yeah, green, Green's team really showing its flaws and competitive. <laughs> I shouldn't have tried to make that play versus, uh, versus Victory Bell. But yeah, uh, Mega Evolving and Ice Beaming is my best play as it hits right on really hard, if not knocks it out, but mainly doesn't allow Victory Bell to come out either. And if I get damage on Rhydon, that's always good for Nine Tails. So not allowing, uh, not allowing Rhydon to to get out of this unscathed, and not allowing Victory Bell in is the point of this turn. They go Blastoise, which is a very good mid ground play. But I want to weaken this thing too for my Nine Tails. But they're they're being smart and keeping uh, and keeping their Rhydon alive because Rhydon is so threatening to my build. Like I don't weaken. I don't weaken Blastoise super well. And if I let Clefable take damage, I'll lose to... Uh... Oh, I got very lucky and froze them. However, this means they can Scald me. But because they have to Scald to Thaw, I'm going to go Kangaskhan and attempt to get burnt here. 
So that way I can facade them. So I get a lucky freeze there. Uh, again, the Scald is an auto thaw from both sides, like if they do it or if I use it. So anticipating them to want to Scald, I'm going to bring out my uh, Kangaskhan here. And if they burn me, I get a, a full power facade. They don't go for the, uh, they don't end up going for the Scald though. So they might not have it. I'm going to click Earthquake because it hits right on if they want to switch out to that. And it also does that. I just need to weaken this and make sure Rhydon doesn't come in for free. I'm still worried about that pincer. Alright, Eric Facade here. Uh, it gets off more damage just for the... It hits Dragon if they want to risk it. It hits Pincer if they want to bring it in on Earthquake. And it does more damage for Gengar, which can knock out Blasters after the next hit. Just a little bit more damage is necessary on Rhydon. Like, just, just about 30% more. And then Gengar knocked it out too. But I don't think Gengar is going to ever have that opportunity. As you can see, they do very, very, very similar damage. Just click it again. I'm sorry about that freeze. That was a huge freeze. Especially because, like, as far as switching into will o -Wisp goes, Blastoise was their best bet besides Clefable. There are two Pokemon that just don't care about it. So, being able to break through Blastoise because of luck... Sorry about that. Hey, shout out to Green. Stole that luck. So if I'm them, yeah, Pinter is a fantastic player. <laughs> However, my best bet is to go for Facade uh, because I get the damage I need for Sludge Bomb. I think that my, I actually think that my Gengar might win this game. Um, because they're giving me damage for Sludge Bomb. Like, t uh, for so typically I would. If this thing got plus two and it was at full, I would have to will o -Wisp it and not Sludge Bomb it. But if I get this facade damage off, which I will, and then I get off the uh, and then I get off the Sucker Punch damage from my Kangaskhan, it puts them in range of my uh, my Gengar, which is faster. I mean, I want to say it puts them in range of Gengar. No, I'm not even sure. Is Nine Tails useful? Huh. I, I don't know why I'm, I'm feeling like Pinsir lives. Because I know Sucker Punch is going to do around 20%, right? Sucker Punch is going to do around 20%. And, and Gengar is Gengar's strong, but with no EVs in this game. I know that I can Sludge Bomb it, though. I'm, I'm assuming Sludge Bomb does around 60. It's the better play to sack Ninetales. And then bring out, my, uh, bring out my Kangaskhan. Fake out to get off a little bit more chip. And then go for Sludge Bomb from there. That might actually end up being the better play. I think that is the better play. As much as I like Nine Tails in this, or maybe second Blasters. No, 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 Blasters can live a hit from Dragonite too, and it threatens everything. Like I like Nine Tails for the Victory Bell, but I think the better play is to do this. Cause Sludge Bomb is not a guaranteed KO after after my King is gone. So it goes for Brick Break there. Maybe they're. Oh, I just died. I was about to say, did Ninetales live that? I was like, maybe they're adamant, so I might be able to beat them down anyway. But yeah, I go Kangaskhan here and I fake out. I fake out into Sucker Punch and that puts them in range of Sludge Bomb. So they don't switch into that. Fake out into Sucker Punch. I wish I got a Rocks in this game too. Michael Fable is going to still defensively check uh, Dragonite. If they switch, I mean, that would have been the worst play because they'll bring out Rhydon. Yep. All right. So this and the Sucker Punch guarantees that they go down to Sludge Bomb now. I think I had to make that play because I didn't think Sucker Punch uh, would do it itself. All right. There you go. That's in range. Beautiful. I can actually go for Shadow Ball too, which hits their team. Uh, actually, no, no, no. Sludge Bomb still... Hits uh hits right on into range of Shadow Ball anyway. This is no point of Shadow Balling. And Gengar doesn't let Clefable in anyway. So yeah, we're going to Sludge Bomb here. As you can see, like I said, I'm running Sucker Punch because uh Pokemon like Alakazam can be very threatening. Uh, so it helps me do like 60% to them, checks them. Because this team doesn't have an Alakazam answer, it doesn't have a, a steel type, it doesn't have 
uh, a Snorlax. So I wonder how they're going to switch if they do have to switch. Because they don't... Nothing on their team, like I said, takes Sludge Bomb into Shadow Ball from Gengar. It's just way too strong. It's way too strong. So they might end up sacking their Pinsir. And if they... Or... If they don't sack their Pinsir, if they end up saving it and trying to sack Rhydon or something, I'll save my... Uh, I'll save my Gengar. Because it can still outspeed Pinsir and knock it out. I love how hype Gengar looks too. He's like, ah... Uh. It's like spooking the pincer. All right, so they do end up saving it. They go right on. As I mentioned, I do not believe that right on can take this into Shadow Ball at all. Yeah, I did way too much. I don't think right on needs this hit at all. If it does, I'll be sad I didn't Shadow Ball. So Shadow Ball should kill at that range. Uh, yeah. Shadow Ball's killing. That's it. I'm believing. That, that, I, I was confident with what I said. Yep. All right. So I was confident. Like, that's around like 55%-ish. And I know Shadow Ball does around 60% to ride on. So getting rid of ride on, very nice. Uh, something I did not switch in very well to. For sure. Dragonite can come out and go for Earthquake now. Uh, my play is to go out into Blastoise and click Ice Beam. I know I'm down a few Pokemon, but... This is definitely my play. Because I need to keep Gengar alive because of Revenge is Pinsir. Uh, if they go for Earthquake here, they're forced to go for Outrage after. They double into what? Victory Bell? What a great play on my opponent's part. Straight up solid play, bro. Solid play. No, you know what the problem is? I'd be faster than this in normal circumstances. Oh, they, 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 didn't test me to, they didn't anticipate me to go this. They anticipated me to go uh, into my um, in Michael Fable. Very solid play. So, like, in normal circumstances, I am faster than this Pokemon. But because I am quiet nature, I shouldn't be. Uh, I'm going to have to make the Gengar play. I'm going to have to make the Gengar play. They double. What are they doubling into? Well, uh, I don't know why they went clef. Oh, okay, because duh, in normal circumstances, I'm faster. So now I look amazing. <laughs> As I just mentioned, in normal circumstances, I am faster. So, um, we're going to sludge bomb here for sure. Man, why am I quiet, Blastoise? Uh, this isn't going to KO. I actually KO'd. I'm impressed. Oh my gosh. I got a crit. My bad, bro. Very important. That's a very important crit. My Gengar might be able to do it, though. Well, assuming that it that didn't KO, that was a very important crit. So, once again, I make the uh, the Blastoise play here on the Dragonite. Then I bring out Michael Fable and I go for Ice Beam. Because Ice Beam hits Dragonite for four times. It knocks out Pinsir and it should knock out Victory Bell at half. This is a good game. They go for Outrage. They go right for Outrage. Surprise. I mean, they're going to be faster than me. I'm surprised they went for Outrage and not... Um, very surprised they went for Outrage and not the... Uh, the What's it called? The Earthquake. They are locked in. So that's very important. They are locked in. Ooh, that's really important. So I can Ice Beam here. Because they're locked in right here. And then I believe... Um, I actually click Rocks because it makes sure that Pinsir goes down. It doesn't allow Dragonite to switch. And I believe it also puts Victory Bell in range of... Uh, It puts Victory Bell in range of every attack. Like, I might have to Sucker Punch at the end, so I'm going to go for the Stealth Rock here, especially if Dragonite ends up hitting himself. Yeah, there's no point in me not going for this. So we get up our Rocks, which means that Pinsir can never come in. I know it's like late last turn Rocks, but it guarantees that Pinsir cannot come in. And Victory Bell is going to come out. Now, if their last attack is Sleep Powder, that means they do not have Sucker Punch, Right? So they may very well have Sleep Powder and not Sucker Punch. 
So it could be Swords and Sleep Powder. I only know two of their attacks so far. I'm going to click Ice Beam here. It's my best play. They're going to Poison Jab and knock me out. Clefable is barely able to hang on instead. And Ice Beam is going to pick up the KO. Oh, so if they did have Swords and Sucker Punch, when, when I went Gengar, what I had to do was I had to click will o -Wisp. As long as it landed, I lived the hit no matter what. And if they went for Power Up that turn or Poison Jab, uh, that means they couldn't touch me. But... Clefable just doing it for the team, picking up the KO on essentially Dragonite, even though it hit itself. Uh, Victory Bell and Pincer with the rocks. Wow. What a great game. Very good game, Willie. Very good game. Came down to basically Gengar at the end versus the world because Gengar knocked out Pincer. Uh, rocks meant that Dragonite could never come in. Um, what I could do was, like I said, if that Victory Bell was Swords Dance Sleep Powder, uh, it would have to, you know, Get some at at hit land sleep powder and get some good sleep turns for me. But if they had sucker punch of their attack and I went for Will O Wisp, I guarantee live the sucker punch and knock them out with Shadow Ball. So that end game would have came down to what victory uh victory bell set they were using. And if they had the correct set versus me, if they got good sleep turns. But yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Definitely some solid games. Uh, of course, if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Feel free to leave suggestions of other Pokemon you'd like to see. Goodbye, my friends.